I'm Luke Nicholas. I've been involved in the New Zealand craft brewing scene for years. This guy here, Kelly Ryan, fellow Kiwi, he's been brewing overseas for a number of years, but finally smelt the hops and has returned home. Why start the journey here, you ask? Well, that's where the plane landed and where we're picking up our camper to start our epic journey. Christchurch has always been one of the leading cities in New Zealand for the craft beer scene, so who better to catch up with than the guy that distributes most of the craft beer up and down the country? He's going to be distributing our collaborative brew too. Hi, I'm Craig Bowen, distribution company Beer NZ. Uh, we're New Zealand's only sole craft beer distributor. And we've been going just over three years now, uh, based in Christchurch, and sell kegs, bottles, and cast condition beers to bars, restaurants, supermarkets, all through New Zealand. Uh, really looking forward to being involved with Luke and all the brewers in New Zealand with their collaboration brew. Uh, can't wait to see the results of it. Uh, it's be, be good to be part of it and I know there'll be customers out there that love to get something new. The most common question we get asked every week is what's new, so it'll be great to have something new on the shelves and the taps, it'll be fantastic. Alright, cheers guys, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Thanks for the samples, this will yeah, uh, no worries, maybe please. fill in a few holes if we can't track these guys down. Sounds good. I'll lock up here. All right. I'll see you at Pomeroy's very soon. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Pass, good stuff. See you shortly. Cheers, All right. Cheers, boys. Later. See you soon. Thanks. Craig's sending us to Pomeroy's to meet up with some of Christchurch's new up and coming brewers. With roughly a dozen Cantabrian craft breweries, Christchurch is a good contender for tipping Wellington off its perch as New Zealand's craft beer capital. So here we are at Pomeroy's on Kilmore Street in Christchurch, one of the best craft beer bars in New Zealand. Give me some brews. Let's do it. It's this way. Pomeroy's was originally the official Ward's Brewery location way back in the mid 19th century. This great community pub is family owned and operated by Steve and Victoria Pomeroy and has a total craft beer focus. With any luck, they'll be keen to support our collaborative brew. You may well be the most craft beer bar in the country. Um, yeah, well no, I guess if you want to count the tax. We're going to try and get everyone to collaborate to create one ultimate New Zealand craft beer. And wanted to have you guys involved because we see you as sort of one of the sort of key, specifically the key um, pub in Christchurch doing like really awesome stuff for the, the craft industry. There's a few other people around the country which we want to get involved too. But we'd love you guys to come on board and sort of be involved with the collaborative brew at the, I guess, the end of the chain to sell to consumers. I think really our support's given. <laughs> we can't have 22 taps and yeah, not show support. I know, I'm really excited about it. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank you for having me. No problem. Kelly's already inside, getting the lowdown on the new guys on the scene, finding out what got these Christchurch brewers into this crazy brewing unity. David Gorn from uh, Golden Eagle Brewing, tell us your story. How'd you get into brewing? Okay, into brewing, I really love to explore the different flavours, the different tastes, the different beers. When I left the UK, I found it difficult to sort of find the craft beer market in New Zealand. But then I started to discover it and thought, hey, you know, I want to be part of this. Why did you come to New Zealand? Yeah, just like on the other side of the world, you know, experience something different and yeah. and yeah, and, and, and bring up a, you know, a whole different angle to life. Sort of something you see worldwide in the brewing industry as well, is you see people coming from everywhere and bringing the influence that they've had growing up with what you've tried with, with British car scale particularly, and you're bringing those flavours to New Zealand, which is again, that's what makes, I think makes craft beer as, as awesome as it is. Yeah, yeah. Hugely active as the president of the Canterbury University Brewing Club, as passionate as hell, Fraser's keen as to share his brews with us. We've got this, this is a Fijo Pilsner. So I had five bags of Fijo was going off in my kitchen and I wanted to do a beer with it. And the idea of using a Pilsner as a base uh, the Pilsner's quite a light coloured beer, the flavour of it's quite light. The hops come through a little bit more than a lager, which I like, and I thought it would be a really good beer to be able to balance the fruit, and on top, because the Fijo is quite a perfumey fruit, 
and it, it would lend itself well, almost as an afterthought on the top of the Pilsner. Um, it was the middle of winter, and, and being a student flat where it was brewed, it was probably sitting at about five degrees <laughs> for most of the fermentation, which gives it a long fermentation period. And I just put the feed jar into the fermenter, let it sit there for about six weeks. While it was brewing, just mel melting the flavours together, the, the Fijoa kind of just incorporated itself into the beer and um, and just sits on top nicely with the hops, almost as an aroma. You get it on the nose and then comes through. Yeah, shit, yeah. You taste it just sort of on the back end, the hops, the malt, but then the Fijoa, and it lingers, doesn't overpower. Um, it's my Fijoa Pilsner. It would go really well with the mussels. Mussels? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So mussels cooked with butter, garlic, herbs and white wine. Oh, yeah. Stir fry them together. Right. It's definitely time to hit some breweries and we've got a busy schedule ahead. The Twisted Hop is pretty unique in New Zealand in that it produces cast conditioned ales. These are unfiltered and undergo some fermentation in the container. It's time to meet an expat that pioneered cask ale in the South Island. So what have you been up to? Um, you know, where have you been? Well, I've only been here what, 24 hours now. Went to Craig's place, his warehouse for Beer NZ, and then on to Pomeroy's, and then we're here, pretty and much. Then, yeah, yeah. check out the brewery, and then we'll come back and try the beer, shall we? Sounds awesome. Brilliant. Let's do it that way around. So what size is the brewery in here? No, we can brew up to about 800 litres, depending on um, yeah, the strength of the brew, the mash tun's a bit of a limitation, although occasionally we do a double mash if we're doing a really strong, strong brew. Right, yes. When, when, when we filled the barrels with the beer out of the fermenters and put the dry hops in, we then leave them for 10 days to two weeks in a conditioning room over the other side, which is kept at about uh, 12 or 13 degrees. Uh, how does that compare with what you used to do? It was about a two week turnaround from brew day to it going out. So, but we'd put them into conditioning tank minimum of three days. We'd have um, agreements with whole, any wholesalers that they had to store them correctly in, with, you know, in cold places. We'd go and do like an audit of the wholesalers to make sure that their, their storage facilities were up to scratch. I mean, you know, car scale is interesting. It's, the, it's, it's beer that's not quite finished when it goes up to the market. You're relying on a publican to, to finish the beer for you, in a sense. So it's a pretty unique, you know, a unique style of beer. And it tastes quite different out of the yeah, cars yeah, yeah. through the hand pump. And so we've sort of come along and thought maybe we'll uh, come and get your guys' experience and if you're keen to come and help us out up in Auckland, mm -hmm. it'll be sort of what can we come up with that, which will become uniquely New Zealand and it'll be something that's representative of the whole craft industry. Yeah, so will it be an ale or a lager? Yeah, well, wow, it's true. Lager, oh, lager yeah. yeast, yeah, lager yeast yeah. with ale temperatures. <laughs> but one thing that you could do, of course, is you could cask some of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're obviously going to bottle it because you want to get it out there for the public to, to see on the shelves, but you could just hype off some into casks and then you do a cask version of it. So let's just go for the golden, maybe to start with. It's a nice, fruity, light session beer. Mmm, very good. I think we'll, we'll, we'll go on to the challenger next, uh, which is a mid-strength beer, I suppose, 5%, special bitter, nice balance of malt and hops in there. Uh, that's our most popular brew. So yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit of sort of a, like a lemony, peppery sort of a nose on it, which is really good. Nice sort of nutty, malty sort of hint on there as well. Great beer. Now, this one does throw a little bit of haze. We find when you put an awful lot of hops in, it is quite hard to get the beer to totally clear. If you cold condition it for a long time, then it will drop clear, or if you um, filter it, which we don't want to do. But because this is a cask beer, it's fairly young, it's fairly fresh, Still got a lot of, uh, probably there's a bit of protein in there, but it will see you get a haze from the hops, I believe. I love hops. <laughs> well done, great beer. Next, it's time to check out iconic Kiwi craft brewer Dickie Fife and his trusty American sidekick Paulie in their home away from home, the Ducks Deluxe. Situated in Christchurch's art centre, this is a beer institution. So here's the Ducks in Christchurch doing some good things, and um, so let's go and see what yeah, we can check it out. Now. 
do it. Black Shag. There was a whole era of Guinness really, when you think of the word Guinness and you just think of the power that that brand you know, welds around the world, that we went, well we're going to make our own. It's great, great beer. Oh, lovely little bit of bitterness in the back there, yeah, nice, yeah. nice uh, roast, roasty barley sort of. And that yeast particularly, being, being an original cask ale yeast, does you know, give you that sort of vinous sort of length and palate in a way. If you talk to a lot of Guinness drinkers back in the UK when Guinness was a, a little bit different, they'll talk about the bitterness and the finish as well, which does, does, isn't there anymore, doesn't no. exist. It's a, it, it, finish, it almost stops when you swallow Guinness, yeah. I find now, but this doesn't, this carries on, yeah. you know? It's reminding you. You've been here what, a couple of years when I came around last time? Yep, I started in 99. Yeah. Boxing Day, 99. And we got Greg down there. Greg's been with us going on eight years now. Yeah, what we're doing is pretty much going out and visiting all the craft brewers so we can share it with the world. Hopefully it's a catalyst to get people out there trying different craft beers that they've never knew about and never seen before. So yeah, oh, it's well, an interesting good. project and hopefully it creates interest around all of what we do. As long as it's local and it's regional and maybe with the regional side of the ingredients could be expressed in that, because beer is regional. I mean that's what I love about the history of New Zealand beer, is there's always a brewery, a brewery, a milk factory, a milk factory. Yep. You know, it's a hub or a home of something. Yep. So we could find something from everywhere yep. and bring it all together. Yep. And it sort of, it, and then it then it denotes the signature of being New Zealand. Yep. Dickie's super keen on using regional ingredients and in trying to get something into a brew that defines Canterbury, a bit of red and black pride in a glass. Onwards, we travel to a little brewery right next to the former Wigram Air Base. We're off to check out the two Pauls, one of them a veritable godfather of Kiwi brewing. We might even find out a little about the spruce beer that they brew, based on the original Captain Cook recipe. Oh, here he is. How are you, Paul? How you going, Luke? Good to see you again. How are you going? Good. This is uh, Kelly. G'day, how's it going? Yeah, all good, all good. So here are Wigram Brewing. Yep, welcome to Wigram Brewing. Where it all happened. Can we have a, have a look around? No worries. Awesome. Let's go through.